gosh, what an absolutely oh, massive play, play to start play. the game. Oh, if he gets he rid of the save line, he gets one hit KO! Welcome back, everybody. Today marks the third and final installment of our coverage on Pokemon's third movie, Spell of the Unknown. We began covering facts you didn't know regarding the background of the film, transitioned into the tragic story of why Pokemon's head writer quit after seeing the final product, and now I want to finish up by covering facts within the movie itself. I hope you guys are ready, because you're definitely going to learn something new today. Let's go. Did you know that each room Molly battles in is designed by Molly to have its own theme? Just look at the scenery. The room that she challenges Brock in is officially referred to as the Spring Room, while the room she battles Misty in is named the Summer Room. The part of the castle that Molly keeps Ash's mom in? Well, as soon as Ash shows up, that becomes the Winter Room. A pamphlet that went on sale at the time of the movie's release also tells us Molly's age during her different transformations. She's 5 for most of the movie, 18 when she faces Brock, oh hey legal, and 10 for her fight against Misty. Molly's voice actress in the dub, Amy Birnbaum, actually voices a good number of other characters throughout the Pokemon series as well. In fact, she's the original voice of May's younger brother, Max, in addition to Jesse's Dust Talks, Melody from Pokemon 2000, and Taya Gardner from Yu-Gi-Oh! Greenfield, the location where the events of the third movie take place, is actually described as one of the most beautiful locations in all of Johto. According to the anime, it's located just southeast of Goldenrod City. While on the topic of locations, the Charisific Valley Natural Reserve, you know the place where Charizard lives and trains at, is also an anime exclusive location within Johto. In fact, remember how Charizard comes to save Ash after seeing him on TV? Well, the Charisific Valley is located between Violet City and Azalea Town, which is how he was able to find Ash so quickly during the events of the movie. In the UK airings of the film, Molly's line of dialogue telling Flaffy to use Headbutt was entirely removed, but the shot of Flaffy using the attack was left in anyway. Worse than that, the Brazilian Portuguese dub has Misty state that she's the Vermilion City gym leader instead of the Cerulean City one. Talk about a screw up. While the first and second Pokemon movies both had significant changes made between the English and Japanese versions of the films, the third was kept mostly true to form. One notable, albeit minor, difference between the two is that Entei speaks with an echo filter in the dub in order to suggest he's communicating telepathically. In the original Japanese version, there's no filter and Entei speaks as a person would normally. Also in the Japanese version, the battles between Molly and Brock, Molly and Misty, and Entei and Pikachu all use brand new arrangements of battle music directly from the gold, silver, and red and green games. For some reason, the dub replaced these songs with generic fight music that had no tie to the franchise whatsoever. Another fun fact is that Lisa from this film actually shares the same name with her voice actress, Lisa Ortiz, who actually only got into voice acting in the first place because her brother stole her car. Seriously. While searching for it, she ran into an employee of Central Park Media who mentioned that his company was searching for voice actors. She's also voiced other popular characters such as Sabrina, Ash's Oshawott, Serenity Wheeler from Yu-Gi-Oh! and Tony Chopper from One Piece. Originally, Team Rocket went to Molly's mansion in order to try and steal treasure from it, completely independent of Ash and his friends being there. The dub, however, made it seem as though they decided to enter the estate simply because Ash was there thinking that there was some important Pokemon inside for them to steal. Also on the topic of Team Rocket, Jesse, James, and Meowth are seen sneaking around in the background during pretty much the entirety of the film. At one point, Meowth asks, do you think we'll get a bigger part in the next movie? Which actually correctly prophesies the trio's larger role and organizational tie to the main villain of Pokemon Forever. And finally, to finish out today, in the short that accompanies the film, Pikachu and Pichu, there's a part where a Voltorb was dubbed saying Electrode. Electrode. Nice. Thanks so much everybody for tuning in. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. If you guys didn't see the other two that are also about Pokemon 3, feel free to go check those out on my channel. They're also equally, if not more amazing than this one. 
If you guys enjoyed, please let me know in the comment section below, maybe with a like or even maybe a subscribe. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it, guys. I'll see you guys next time. Have a great day. Peace.